Hello, and thank you for joining us for the next session of the Destination IP Virtual Summit. In this session, a panel will discuss the economics and management of next generation IP departments and law firms in light of COVID-19. A recording of the webinar and the slides will be made available to all registrants. Feel free to enter any questions using the Q&A feature in the Zoom menu. Also, feel free to follow us on LinkedIn to see news about other upcoming webinars. And with that, I'll turn things over to Steve. Great, hey, thanks Michelle, and thank you for all the hard work you've put in for our Destination IP uh, series so far. So today, uh, our panel is gonna be discussing the uh, impact of COVID-19 on, on our offices. And we've got a great uh, panel here today. We got, uh, we're starting out with, with uh, Zakalovsky Karian. We usually just call her Z for those of us that are challenged uh, in pronunciations and she likes that. So Z is our docketing manager at Schweigman. She's also an attorney and Z has, uh, you know, very a high, a great deal of experience um, with uh, managing an office and managing her team and actually just recovered from a case of COVID-19. So she brings a special perspective to the, to the, to the seminar today. Our, our next panelist is Jeff Drager. We're very uh, lucky to get Jeff today. Jeff is chief patent counsel at Intel, and which is one of the uh, biggest patent filers in the world and one of the more sophisticated, or in my opinion, one of the most sophisticated patent department. Um, and so we've got also Pierce Blewett, who Pierce was, uh, is a partner at Schweigman. Pierce was also a uh, patent counsel at Kimberly Clark, was a, uh, a chief patent counsel in one of the divisions, getting the, the exact title uh, bollocks there. But Pierce, you can uh, weigh in on that later if you want to. And then we've got Bob Brace, who's our uh, chief executive officer at Schweigman. Bob's got an MBA. He's been with our firm a long time, and uh, he's uh, extremely well-versed in all the economics of law firm management. And today he's, I think he's gonna have some really interesting things to say. So with that, let's uh, flip over to the introductory slide here. So we're kind of in general, our episode today, if you will, is kind of the economics of, of uh, you know, the COVID era, you know, the changes that we're experiencing in uh, you know, the, um, you know, the revenues, the budgets, you know, the operations. Um, we're going to talk about setting up the office and just sort of some of the uh, basics of, you know, what needs to be considered when you're getting your office ready for people to come back into it if, if they aren't already. Then we're going to talk about the challenges of working virtually, um, which is a, a really interesting topic. And I think all of us are kind of wondering how this is all gonna affect us going forward from a social perspective and work social aspects and then just efficiency. And, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about client engagement challenges. Um, and then we're gonna just pontificate if we have time about, you know, ways this may permanently change the way we work um, into the future. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Bob Brace to kind of get us rolling here to talk about the economics aspect. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Michelle, can you put on the next slide? Thank you. So I'm gonna go through each one of these and you know, kind of give you the law firm perspective. Some of it is gonna be uh, general, they could probably be applied to all businesses. So for law firms, you know, the added costs that we initially started to have were um, in regards to remote infrastructure. And because law firms and, and, and law departments have knowledge-based workers, um, a lot of firms already had the infrastructure in place to support their attorneys, but they didn't have the infrastructure for back office. So some of the increased costs there were just making sure that employees had the equipment that they needed and so forth so that they could work at home and be as efficient as they were in the office. We had an increased cost for frontline employees. Now, this is, happens more, I think, in, in larger companies, especially in retail and so forth. But... Um, we did additional compensation for some of our employees that we were requiring to come into the office uh, and take additional risks. And we've also been, uh, I've been doing like small bonuses here and there for people that are coming into the, to the office on a regular basis, just as a thank you. 
So that was one of the increases as, in, as well. And, and a lot of people have seen it on the news where a lot of retailers are you know, upping the hourly rate, uh, rates and so forth to compensate people for the risk that they are taking. We also had some additional benefit costs. Um, the one I highlight here is transportation and parking. For our line employees that were coming in and um, you know, still having to operate in the office for mail, uh, receipt of checks, going through docking material, just making sure that we're not missing anything. Uh, I, I didn't feel comfortable asking people to take public transportation. So I provided the non-exempt employees that were still coming into the office. I, I, I gave them a parking allowance to offset any costs that they might have when they're going in and out of the office. And we're not requiring them to be in every day of the week, but there are people that are in you know, two to three times every week. We also put allowances in place um, so that we could, so that our employees could buy the necessary services that they needed for uh, performing their jobs and we could actually set some standards. You know, one of the allowances we gave is an uh, internet allowance. And depending on the state that you are in, if, if there is a requirement for an employee to do their job, the company does have to pay the bill. And I, and I know that's very strict out in California. But you know, we had a minimum that we wanted people to have on their internet as far as speed so that we could support them you know, with our IT people and that, you know, they just they couldn't be on there too long, so they just needed the bandwidth. So we provide a internet allowance. We also uh, changed our continuing legal education and allowed people to use dollars out of that to buy equipment and other things to beef up their home offices and supplies. Um, protective measures for employees. Um, we provided face masks for all of our employees. Fortunately, we have a sewing group in our firm and, and they were making face masks and one gal in particular, she made face masks for everybody. So, you know, the firm paid for that as a benefit for all of our employees. Uh, expanded cleaning and sanitation. That is something that we had to work with, uh, with the building. Anything that we disagreed with, um, we would, we had a sit down meeting with them and we just asked them to make sure that they were cleaning on a regular basis, doing the sanitation. Um, making sure that the filtration system in the building was up to speed and it was and it's an older building. So, you know, these are the things that you you have to do to ensure that your people are going to be safe once they're back in the office. We also did spacing of workstations. Uh, we, we never really embraced the open concept. We had about 20 people maybe in, in open cubicles, but we have since moved all those workstations into private offices. So we have nobody that is in a common workspace. You know, if you have, um, if you do have a, an open work environment, you're probably going to want to stagger your employees and so forth when they are coming back in. Um, we had costs related to an increase in digital demand. We have to have website improvements. You have to have content. Um, it's important to have the, the new content for client engagement and to attract new clients. Uh, we have costs associated with the Family First Coronavirus. Uh, Response Act, paid family leave, paid sick leave. We were also, one of the big things we had to do was replace uh, incoming and outgoing paper processes. You know, for the most part, we had been doing that for quite a long time, but there were some things that were still in process to be changed to uh, no paper. So some of the things that we're doing now is check payments. Um, we're only doing ACHs, so that was a big project to get all that set up receiving only electronic payments. We're requesting that, we're still getting checks, but that has been reduced quite a bit. And a lot of our clients and vendors, they all want the same thing. So everybody is doing this at this time. Um, we're also processing invoices electronically and offsite. And we're also gonna, we're gonna expand that into the future and just have a company take that over. And we are adding additional digital payment options to to our website so that clients have a number of options that so they can pay us electronically, you know, whether it's credit card or Venmo or, or any of those items. Um, some of the savings that we've had, we, we, we froze new and non-essential expenses. You know, some of the savings is travel, meals and entertainment, events, some, some places did compensation, um, I would, I would always caution people to regarding the compensation, just because, you know, you have a social responsibility to your employees and you really do have to, you know, treat them well, because I think in the last crisis, a lot of companies that did not treat their 
employees well did not come out of it very well. So I, I think you're going to just use caution when, when cutting comp. I mean, as far as travel goes, I doubt that's ever going to come back as like it was before. Just because now that we're finding that the video conferencing is working so well, uh, I don't think a lot of companies are ever going to want to go back to paying those expenses uh, related to travel. It, there will be some, but I think it'll be, uh, it'll have a different priority. Uh, we also looked at membership dues. We cut things that were um, just really resume line items and things like that. The, the, the memberships that we need to have to grow the, our attorneys and so forth in, in their careers, we, we kept those going. Um, there, there is, for self-insured dental and medical plans, there is savings right now. There's not a lot of usage for these plans. And, but don't, I, I would caution anybody to kind of budget that in because there's a pent up demand. And a lot of people that are not seeking uh, medical attention right now, they're gonna seek it later when this kind of um, you know, goes away or settles down. And there are a lot of people that may not be taking care of themselves, so you might have more catastrophic claims and so forth. So even if your plan is not getting a lot of usage right now, I would anticipate that your, your insurance company is going to definitely increase your rates because they are they're getting ready for the pent-up demand in the next year. Um, even with fully insured, you're going to have the same thing because you're, the fully insured plans, even though you're going to be probably, uh, you've got more premium in there, they are still going to want to um, uh, raise your rates just in case, you know, for the for the big push that's going to come after COVID dies down. Um, managing revenue and budget changes, you know, you got to expect more delinquent accounts resulting uh, in a budget increase of bad debt. Remember, some of your clients have had the rug pulled out from underneath them, um, so you really do have to be empathetic, you know, if you want to maintain those relationships especially with your long-term clients. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna have to provide payment plans, change your terms and so forth, but really work with your clients because you know, we're all in this together at this point. Um, freeze new and non-essential spending. Uh, look at your marketing budget. Make sure that you're putting resources into marketing that provides a return. Uh, CLE, a lot of firms already provide uh, online learning for CLE and so getting people to take advantage of that now instead of like traveling for CLE and so forth. That's definitely going to, you know, be a savings in the future. Um, and you can look at your profit sharing amounts and make sure that you want to keep your plan consistent, depending on what you think the next year is going to bring. And capital budgets, you know, that's going to be really focused on your, your remote workforce. You know, we are doing new projects, but those projects are only related to maintaining a virtual workforce. Uh, vacation time. Encourage your employees to take the time off for, for mental health. This is very important right now. Uh, this has to be a priority. You want your people proactively taking time off and seeking psychological help. Uh, this will keep your medical costs down again because you won't have these catastrophic events happen from people that are not taking care of your, taking care of themselves. Uh, don't let people wait to take their vacation uh, for, the, for the end of the pandemic because you can't have everybody out all at once. So and adjust the vacation payout and carryover policies. Keep the carryover and payouts reasonable. Don't do 100%. You know, there should be some loss there so that you're encouraging your employees to take their time off. And the last thing I'll touch on is overtime. You know, you just, you must follow the Fair Labor Standards Act uh, for all over hours worked over 40 hours in a given week. Um, what I would recommend and what I've been reading is if you do have a lot of non-exempt employees now at home, which a lot of us do, um, you do need a good system in place for reporting hours. And you got to watch the bonuses. You know, I mentioned that we give small bonuses and so forth to some of the uh, line employees that are coming in and taking additional risks. But you want to phrase that in a way that it doesn't become part of the overtime calculation. And that is really all I have. I'll, I'll hand it over to Jeff. Great. Thanks, Bob. From, from the corporate perspective, and I'll start with the department, mostly focus on how we see things. Um, costs have changed significantly in a lot of ways, but um, it's not clear that the net of that all is in one particular direction. So obviously travel costs have gone down a lot and, and they are quite large normally. So I, I agree with Bob that that's going to be a long-term trend even you know, two, three, four years from now, once we're 
all feeling more comfortable traveling. It just Zoom is only going to get better, and it's pretty good already. So that's uh, definitely on the good news side. I think there are pockets of increased productivity, although managing has gotten harder. So uh, that I wouldn't count on going hugely in a particular direction unless your work is pretty commodified and measurable. Um, so that kind of work, it's easier to keep track of. It's the more ambiguous work that requires brainstorming and collaboration, harder to measure. It's just harder to do that kind of work at all right now. Um, and so uh, just you'd have to net out how that's going and keep a closer eye on it. Um, you know, uh, as far as a patent department going, the the court and PTO speeds have slowed down uh, in some significant ways all around the world. So if you imagine your patent portfolio is something that's moving along and incurring expenses as it goes, it's slowed down. So potentially some pretty significant costs might start slowing down on not as much the new applications, unless you've explicitly reduced those, but the prosecution and, and for us, our prosecution spend is, you know, substantial part of our spending. So that's significant for us. Um, and there haven't been, you know, patent offices haven't uh, added any fees. Uh, and in fact, the, if anything, there were some proposed fees for August, 2020 that are not happening. So, so uh, the, the other, from the corporate perspective, you know, we're seeing a lot more uncertainty on how much money we're going to get in the future. So we've penciled out a lot more scenarios and a lot more flexibility than we have had to in the past. And so I would just think about how would you do a bunch of pretty varied scenarios because demand can be a problem, your staffing can be a problem, my inventors could be a problem. It's just a lot more problems. So I'd pencil out a lot more contingency plans on the economics than usual and just, you know, have a sober and uh, very candid assessment of scenarios that you might have thought were not ever possible before. This is the era of the impossible potentially happening. So it's better to be ready than to be surprised. Those are my thoughts. Hey, thanks, Jeff. It was very uh, helpful. And I'll just add a couple things before we move to the next slide, just from a <clears throat> um, law firm perspective, obviously all of the things that Jeff mentioned in terms of uncertainty about his budget, just propagate right down to our uncertainty. And this year has been a, an interesting year. It's not been as dramatic of a, a shift as we thought it would be. And I think part of it is while our, New, new application filing is definitely down. We did benefit from the patent office uh, having a lot of extra time on their hands because no one was going on vacation. So they kind of ramped up the prosecution. Um, and so that was a little bit of an offset, which was very helpful. Um, and that kind of kept things steady. But we did have some clients that Bob mentioned that, you know, even some big clients that had never had a slowdown before that all of a sudden found themselves in a weird place where you know their business was really slow suddenly it wasn't any it wasn't in intel or anybody uh, any companies that are kind of in the infrastructure business but you know kind of more outside of that area where you can imagine there's some businesses that um, had to take a little break um, while we were all struggling with this so those businesses had more budget interruption but they kept going we just had to accommodate uh, them being slowing slower on pain so so now we're kind of looking into next year and and we're kind of also at that point where we're starting to okay we better make sure that we're ready for anything because we're, we're just not sure what's going to happen but so far we've we've you know been able to to uh go along with these budget cuts that we made and um yeah that the um savings on on all these different categories uh, especially travel have been you know way bigger than you realize. And plus that's just pure cash out the door that we don't really don't get any reimbursement for anymore. So it's saving, you know, profit essentially, instead of just, you know, instead of saving maybe 20% uh, 
of what you spend. We're saving 100% of that, which offsets a lot of missing revenue. So, so anyways, with that, let's roll on to the next slide. So in here, we're going to talk a little bit, and Bob already touched on this a little bit uh, about, you know, what you do to get the office set up. So, Bob, you're going to take it again, right? So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, you know, this is a, this is a tough one, and I think there's going to be a lot written about, you know, the office of the future. So it's really hard to kind of say what it's going to look like. I think it's going to look, look different for every type of organization out there. Uh, some of the things that you need to really be thinking about as a leader is you've got to think about, you know, is your largely empty office serving your business? Um, you know, that answer is going to be different for everybody. You know, for knowledge-based companies, the large office space is most likely going to be phased out. With that said, um, you will have to determine what is an office truly for. And that is also going to be different for every company. But you really are going to have to start to ask yourself questions like, what value do I receive from having this footprint? Um, what will be lost if the office space goes away? You know, organization, and I, and I know Jeff touched on this, organizations have found that collaboration outside of one's group has declined by about 10% uh, during this work at home period, but has increased amongst their group by 40%. So, you know, I think you'll see a lot of innovation around how to collaborate effectively remotely because this remote working is, is not going away. This, I think this is really part of our new normal for quite a while. Um, it can be difficult, you know, for, you know, some of the other things that you might lose would be, you know, it's hard for new employees to express their genuine selves and strengths, you know, from a distance. Uh, you have to work on that and figure out how to do that and how to continue to keep your company culture. Um, and it will be hard to form deep, meaningful bonds. But there again, that I think those things are just going to get tackled in the future and there's just going to be a lot written about them and we're just going to have to, you know, roll with it as it comes out. Um, will there be an impact on productivity if you don't have an office? Well, what businesses found out is their, their workers adapted very quickly and a lot of them had productivity increases. And I know Jeff mentioned that as well. Um, Z, you had something on that, didn't you? You had like even a, a yeah. experience within the firm like that. Yeah, definitely. I, um, well, at the beginning, we didn't know how long this was going to last. Was it going to be a couple of weeks? Was it, and we we're all going to go back to normality? And uh, five months in, we're still working from home. And at the beginning, I did see that the productivity was not there. So I'm on top of people, what's going on. Um, and right now I've seen a big shift of we're up to date on, on reports, uh, people just giving it their all because they're a little concerned. Okay. What's going to happen if heads start, uh, being chopped, is mine going to be the one, you know, and it's that uncertainty of, um, am I going to have my job? Am I going to be that one that will lose my job? Because around us, there's other people that are being um, let go and some businesses are closing. So um, I've definitely seen a big productivity in, in my department and also um, being part of other webinars, we've all, we've talked about this that people are seeing increase in productivity rather than the decrease. Yeah, I think once people realized that this was not going away anytime soon, um, you know, they just settled in and and got into a rhythm and figured out how to make this work. Um, you know, one of the points I wanted to make about collaboration, you know, collaboration uh, amongst different departments is very important. And, you know, that is something that you're going to have to address with your office space and how to use an office space to do that or how to do it virtually. Um, you don't want to lose the outside chance collaborations because there's usually important outcomes, you know, people just bumping in, into each other in the hall and working something out. I mean, there's a lot of great things that have come out of that. So you really do want to keep that going and figure out how to nurture that. Um, you know, another thing you have to ask yourself, especially in our business, is do knowledge workers really need an office? Uh, 
you know, working from home for knowledge workers has been accelerating for years. The crisis has only increased the pace and it's here to stay. Most workers being surveyed right now want to continue working at home in some form or another. I think that, you know, if you would have interviewed these people two weeks into the uh, to COVID, no one wanted to be home anymore because we were just all not used to being home this much. But, you know, people have kind of embraced it and it, I think it's changed their family dynamic. Um, you know, so, you know, so with that said, this could be working in the office, you know, you could be working in the office every other week, every two weeks, you know, you're going to have to figure out what works for your company and that is going to change what the office is going to look like as well. You know, you might have to stagger uh, workers that are in open concept departments and so forth. Uh, an interesting statistic is, you know, before the crisis, five to 15% of Americans were working at home. Now, 50% of those employed before the pandemic work from home. And that is, and, and, and people are not seeing a big change in how their business is functioning, at least not, not in our business. Um, so going forward, you know, companies have to remain flexible and continue the working at home you know it is our new normal and you have to it helps provide work family harmony um, at some point we will have to reopen our offices and you're going to have to you know tackle that there you know even while you're thinking about what are your space needs in the future um, every company will need to have a return to work plan and they will all be different but there are several items that I think are important for every plan. You know, workplace safety, a lot of your employees are not gonna feel comfortable coming back to the office right away. So you've got to communicate what you are doing to keep your, your, your employees safe. Um, you know, you wanna have exposure res response plans, PPE, cleaning procedures, uh, physical distancing, you know, that staggering shifts, rotating weeks in the office, moving workstations to increase separation. In our firm, like I said, we moved everyone out of the cubicles and into private offices. Um, right now, you probably do want one-way traffic patterns, uh, restricting non-essential business travel. You know, right now it's all restricted, but even when you open back up, non-essential business travel, I just don't think is going to come back for a while. And when you are going to, you know, loosen your restrictions, you really do need to follow the government guidelines. Uh, and you're going to need client and visitor, visitor contact protocols. And you'll have to have a recall procedure. All employees returning to the, the same to the office the same day is probably going to be overwhelming and, and unsafe. So you know you need to phase in your employees using a non-discriminatory factor. You know I mean it's just you, you've got to you know select them carefully. You know work share schedule changes determine how to handle employees that are unable or unwilling to to return to work. You probably need to get that worked out before you know it becomes an issue. You need to review your employee benefits. Make sure timing of coverage, et cetera, is in line with keeping workers safe. You know, this pertains to new hires. You know, a lot of companies have a waiting period, but is that, is that the way to go anymore, or do you need to change that? Um, add telehealth benefits. That is going to be a big thing, and I think that's just going to really change the way med medical uh, services are delivered to us. And I know, Shakalaski, you mentioned um, some apps and so forth that were being used for some of these things. Oh, yeah. So one thing that I did want to point out to um, being part of different webinars, um, I've heard that there are some firms that are not going to be opening their their law firm again. They're going to a virtual space, people working from home because they saw that it, it worked for them. The productivity is up. And so what's the point of paying for this office space that uh, is no longer needed. So we're definitely going to be seeing that too. And uh, managers are on top also of their employees to see how they're doing. Um, all of this came and shaked our world, right? And um, really great things have never come out of uh, you being in a comfort zone. Everybody feels uncomfortable and is trying to figure out a, a new way. And um, good stuff has come out of all of this. Um, there has been some um, good applications. Some people are a little overwhelmed in the situation that they're in. That they're in. We need to make sure that like everything, there is a balance. 
and work and family balance should not be any different. And who is to determine what that balance is? The only person that's going to be able to do that, to determine what that comfort zone is, is going to be you, you and your needs and your family needs. Um, and there are apps out there that will help you to be able to um, get through all of this. Um, one of them is uh, Calm. I don't know if you've heard. Uh, it's it's an application that helps you relax and de-stress yourself and and get better sleep. Sleep is very important. Um, uh, another app is called Headspace. It's this is guided for meditation, so you can practice at any time. Um, sometimes we get super busy and we forget to drink some water or uh, keep hydrated. So there's another app that's called the Water Minder. Oh my God, there's so many apps out there that um, all you have to do is do Google of the best wellness apps uh, that are easy to use, friendly users. Um, that will be able to keep your mind busy. Um, maybe do some exercise. I was telling Bob earlier today that um, going for a run around my backyard, uh, that helps uh, get some toxics out of my, my, my system and have happy thoughts. Um, don't forget to take care of yourself. And don't just focus on work either. Um, there are other stuff that is important, taking care of your health, of your body and your mind. Um, also, I know maybe I'm derailing it a little bit, Bob, but I also wanted to mention something that it's very important to keep in contact with your teammates. Right now, it's really easy for us to be in uh, Zoom meetings. And like you said, that you go through in the office, you would be able to walk through the hallway and say, oh, hey, and try to uh, solve something in the hallway. And we don't have that anymore. Um, but a phone call, we do a random phone call to your teammates and let them know that you're there. Ask them how they're doing. It doesn't have to be a work phone call. Um, also, in these times, feedback. It's important to the people that you work with. Let them know um, in, in one of the um, IP destination virtual meetings that we had this week, uh, we talked about feedback. And um, it is important to let people know uh, what, what they're doing right and where are the things that they need to adjust. Um, not to point out all the negative stuff, but definitely mention the good and bad in, in a good way and in a productive way. Oh, also, be open-minded and flexible with the people that you're working with, uh, their schedules. Um, people are already stressed out, you know, under the situation that we're all living in this world. And if they feel supported at work, there will be more of that productivity. So as a manager, you will notice that lack of productivity and when it needs to be addressed and when you need to be moving stuff uh, from one project to another or moving things around with your personnel. That was my little spiel, Bob, about that. Exactly. Hey, well, I, 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 I have a quick question for you. Okay, go ahead. Um, as you're moving through this, and we should be mindful. I think we've got plenty of time, but I, I want to just ask you about the challenges of folks that have children at home that are doing homeschooling or Zoom schooling or you know whatever remote learning. What what have you heard from from our people about the challenges of that, and what have we been doing to help with that? Sure, and that is actually one of the um, you know things that needs to be on your return to work. Uh, uh, list is 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 remote work and taking those things into consideration um, you have to be mind, mindful of daycare shortages distance learning uh, you have to you know be supportive of, of, of parents that are at home that are, are teaching their kids and, and you know one of the things up here in Minnesota is every district is different so 
like Z said, you know, reaching out to people on a regular basis is very helpful. Well, that's something that I do as well. And I did about 20 check-ins uh, Monday. And just to get people's feedback and a lot of stuff that came back was regarding their children and what their schedules are with school. And, you know, what I was telling everybody is, and, and even in our uh, uh, town hall meeting is just talk to your manager and tell them what you need. We will be flexible. That's, that, that is like the primary thing that all employees are requesting right now is just the flexibility. And, you know, you might have a person that, you know, has kids going to school every other day and um, they have to drive them to school. So, so maybe they, or, and they have to teach their kids some days. So maybe they can't get on until 10 o'clock and they're going to be out in the afternoon. And the biggest thing that we're doing to support our employees is just being flexible and listening to their needs. We actually have compiled a list of other requests that, you know, we just haven't had a chance to go through yet, but it is on my list to, to bring up with our management committee and just kind of go through and, and find out what additional things we could provide, you know, whether it's online tutoring and things like that, just to free up people's time. And, you know, one of the big things going in or coming out of this will be, you know, there's been a, a productivity increase with people being out of the office and that's with their kids home. And so you can only imagine how that will change once the kids go back to school. I mean, there's, there's a huge benefit to, to the remote work. And, and, and I think just being flexible and allowing for that and listening to your employees, I mean, that's going to, that's going to go a long way. Um, and I'll, and I'll finish this up pretty quickly, Steve, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, we should, because we need to kind of yeah. keep rolling. So, you know, part of your plan, you got to have communications, you know, you got to, you know, make sure that you're, you're valuing characteristics of employees differently. You know, you might not want to value attendance as heavily as you might have in the past because those, you know, that's just not going to be, it's not going to be productive. You know, make sure people are staying home when they're sick. Um, exposure response plans, you know, another item for your plan is update company policies. You know, there's been changes in regulatory requirements, you know, attendance policies. When should you send a person that's sick home? You know, I don't think we're going to let people sit in the office anymore and just sneeze and cough. And you need your telecommuting policy. And finally, you need a business continuity plan. You know, update with infectious disease, disease control and global disasters. I, you know, this, th th when this pandemic is over, it doesn't mean there won't be another one. And I think you're going to have to be prepared. And I think you'll see a lot of companies focusing on resilience and you know how they can navigate crisis like this when a lot of things shut down. And that's all I have on of the office of the future. Thanks, Bob. So I was gonna, as we transition here, I was gonna inject a little humor that Z, we're gonna need an app to help cope with, with app overload. Anxiety. <laughs> okay, so. Um, and we, we probably need a hallway app so you can just randomly be like connected with coworkers that, you know, it just it pops up and goes, okay, you've just run into Jeff in the hallway. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> next, next slide, please. All right. Pierce is going to take this one and run with it. And Jeff's going to have some, some thoughts too. Thanks Pierce? very much. Thanks very much, Stephen. And, and welcome everybody. And thanks for joining us during these Really interesting, challenging times. Um, we'll touch, Jeff and I will touch on some of the sort of softer skills here and, and I'll run through some of the stuff, um, the points in the slide pretty briefly. I, I, I know we're, we're getting short on time, but um, first one up was employee engagement. Um, and for us, this is crucial. Um, uh, just to fill in Steve's kind introduction, in, in 2008, I was Chief Patent Counsel and, and General Counsel at, at Kimberly Clark. And we we lived through some of this and we actually measured employment engagement. We did surveys and it was really interesting to see what regions of the world felt more engaged than others to, to the company. Um, but turning to the present, you know, the, the sort of mechanics, if you will, of employee engagement have changed. So your sort of all firm meetings in, in, in person or your, your coffee outings or in-person team lunches are on hold right now. And we, we used to really enjoy doing that stuff. Um, but you know, things have changed, at least for now, and, and we really feel for engagement, it's important to keep in touch and, and, and not isolate. So, for example, we have weekly online meetings with, with say, Steve chairs the one for the whole firm. Um, and then there's kind of a local one for our California or Silicon Valley office. And, you know, where possible, assuming you've got bandwidth or home circumstances allow we turn the video on so we can see people's faces. Now we haven't done that today because we don't want to scare anybody. But uh, when you got to, when you, when you when on a more sort of human level, if you will, we we um, 
we try and do it. We keep the agenda very informal, so personal news is welcome. Um, other efforts to keep engagement up include um, these sort of online team games or trivia nights where you can get into breakout rooms. And probably the one I think many of us enjoy the most is kind of an online sporting app or shared cycling, you know, Peloton or Zwift, that, that, that kind of thing. Um, in terms of keeping and building trust, um, no matter what phase you're in, trust probably is closely related to integrity. So as you might have gathered from the introduction, we're, we're honest about COVID. Um, if anyone or, or a close fam, family member ha has that, we, we, we try to talk about it and, and, and firm support has been strong on that. Um, we also try to build trust by keeping our, if I could call it kindness glasses on. So we, we, we try to help each other out and be understanding of family demands, lack of familiarity with new systems or duties and, and so forth. Um, for those of you who are team leaders out there, whether it's COVID or not, I think it's always good, you know, just be honest, acknowledge the difficulties, but try to put them into perspective, you know, the bigger picture, um, identify opportunities. We've had panels on that. Um, try and talk about the resilience of the firm or your, or your, or your company or your legal department, what, what, whatever it is. And, and if you can, tell a personal story that people can relate to. The, you know, humor is the, what's it, laughter is the best medicine. Um, one of my uh, personal, uh, the, the, the to diversity, um, we've had a good panel on that re recently. Um, we were trying as a firm to, if you will, listen first before leaping in there and, and assuming we, we, we knew what to do on this. Um, obviously, this action was taken in the light of what some panelists call the emotional triggers, quote unquote, of, of the deaths of George Floyd and, and Breonna Taylor and others. Um, so we are trying to reach out and leverage these opportunities to sort of fuel the diversity fire, if, there, if there's such a phrase. Um, so don't forget, uh, you know, that, that, don't let that one fall off the of the wagon, it's very, very important. Um, looking at now versus the long run, hopefully um, Zoom um, is, is, is not gonna be our only or exclusive contact mode for, for forever. Um, but as we, as, as, as we look forward, um, the, the firm's actually been fortunate to, to develop some of this forward looking technology and adopt a satellite model, if you will. So things such as docketing automation, um, Bob touched on the, 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 the offices, um, what, I'd, what I'd call plug and play offices or modular offices. So, so another phrase I'd use is continuous functionality. So wherever you are, uh, if you need dual screens, you got dual screens, whether it's at home or at the office, you know, you, 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 it's, 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 you can remain productive where, wherever you are. And of course, many of us are along that spectrum with, you know, email in our phones and all the rest of it. Um, shared folders so you can ex access those in, anywhere in the world, basically, those, those sorts of things. Um, one thing I've found with my clients, um, just trying to get better and better in the long run with budgeting software, as COVID broke and flat out worries about where this was all going, um, to, and, and we'll touch on this in the next slide with, with client engagement, but, but being able to to help with portfolio management um, in changing environments and forecast costs and, you know, try different uh, uh, scenarios and see, 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 see how the portfolio works, you know, in, in, in different environments, you know, factoring in different things. Hiring, oh, well, we all know how that works when it's kind of in person, there's kind of in, initial interviews on the phone and then someone will come in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's going to be more difficult, if, <laughs> if not impossible, uh, on the in-person side. Um, but my feeling, again, chatting to some of the diversity um, people that are helping us, I was asking about, can you help us with, you know, finding diversity candidates and so forth? And one of the, Ron's answer to me, Ron McRae, he was number two at Nike. He said, Piers, good people, no good people. So my sense is that maybe the recruiting agencies will be less um, of an important resource potentially, and more our, our personal networks may become more important. Um, obviously at interviews, I think they need to explore the candidates comfort with online skills. And initially I thought team player, eh, maybe not so important, they're not gonna do it. But actually team player might actually be more important these days, uh, especially 
um, in an online context. Um, progression to working from home, yeah, um, I think as Bob and Z have said, that's just gonna increase. Um, I have some in, in, uh, personal friends who are realtors and um, in brief chats with them, they've said, look, people are starting to question why they live where they live. If we're gonna be at home from now on, you know, do I really wanna be, you know, two doors from the highway or next to the railway station or where, where, wherever I am? Um, but the need as they, as they help people with that has always been for an extra bedroom or a home office as, as being essential. Um, and obviously some folks aren't necessarily doing that. They rather would like more stability, thanks very much. But, but it's been interesting to see what people are asking for. Um, there's also been a challenge, you know, we use Zoom, other clients use Skype, others use Teams, some use Slack. I'm, I'm wondering, I hope there's gonna be some harmonization on that because to the extent there's been difficulties, it's usually to do with the different systems that we, we all use. Um, but I do see sort of the interfaces getting easier, it being easier to get online, improved security, all that, all, all that kind of thing. And the last point I'd mentioned before handing over to Jeff, um, the employee perspective, and pointing out some of the benefits, I, I think particularly in California where the commute times, which is awful, um, being able to work from home has been seen as a blessing. Um, and as much as the commute times are close to zero or non-existent right now, um, flexibility, I think Steve touched on that, just or, or, or Bob, you know, the ability to work different hours or with children or kids at home, whatever. And productivity, I'm, I'm perhaps not surprised it's got less, less distractions. You know, you can turn the phone off, just hammer at it for an hour or two, get a coffee and then come back. So, so those are the things I think we're seeing just, just very briefly. But Jeff, what, what, what are you seeing on, on the corporate side? Yeah, thanks, Piers. Well, um, you know, they, they used to say a picture tells a thousand words. I'd say a grunt tells a thousand words. You uh, let out a little grunt when you <laughs> mentioned hiring there. Uh, I, th I think it's really scary to think about hiring or starting a new job. I mean, um, everybody continuing on with their current job and roughly what they're doing is very effective. Working from home, we're, we're working from home uh, until July of next year is the plan. Um, so I think we have to acknowledge it's a new muscle and connecting with our, pe with our peers and keeping the team going. It's not the same. Even my team was very virtual. Your firm was very virtual. It's not the same when it's completely virtual and we can't leave our houses and kids are around. It's very different. So, uh, you know, some of the tactics we've used, uh, office hours, I like, where's that virtual run into the hall? Maybe have an office hour. I'm trying that later today. Um, and some of my team has done that where they have, you know, a, uh, optional office hour. We have optional events, um, happy hours. Uh, we've had, we pay for people's lunches, you know, <laughs> which you used to do, which sounds kind of hokey, but, uh, you know, we'll reimburse you $15, come to lunch. Just uh, it, keeping those connections is important and you have to do something different. Um, and then we've gotten the the biggest surprise I've had, <clears throat> we did something called a, if you remember, at MTV Cribs, <laughs> where oh, <yeah>. you <laughs> send people through your house. So we've been doing, <laughs> we've had about five house tours of the staff. It was pretty, um, the people have really gotten into it. They did a kind of a PowerPoint or a movie of their house. And uh, boy, uh, our team's comments afterwards were, we've learned more about each other in the last four months than we have in 15 years. And I've got a pretty stable team. Um, so that really is um, surprising. And I think it's an opportunity to embrace it. And you can't just continue doing business as you used to. And then the cautionary note I'd add is, um, I got really bad Zoom fatigue, I think, in April or May, you know, just on video all the time. So uh, it's not going to be attractive to everybody at any particular time. So make it optional, make people um, feel it's okay not to come or to come to some of them because some people have two working uh, parents who, you know, one has to be out of the house, they have an essential job. So got to be really sensitive to that dynamic that um, 
you try to be inclusive and be flexible, figure out maybe videos people can watch offline. You can record these sessions so that they can still participate at least in some fashion. So those are, those are a couple thoughts about dealing with it. Yeah, those are uh, really good thoughts, Jeff, actually. And it gets, you know, I think you, you're a little bit ahead of um, Schwegman, at least parts of Schwegman. It sounds like California's doing a little bit more um, sort of collective getting together online than we have in Minneapolis, which we probably need to ramp up a little bit because I'm definitely missing the connection with, you know, people that I normally didn't really, you know, work with, uh, but I'd see every day. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, that there is a deep, a human need to actually be in proximity to other people um, that has to get fed some way or another. And so eventually, hopefully we'll be able to be in the office part of the time. But I think some of these social Zoom things can help a little bit to uh, supplement that. But I love this Cribs idea a lot. And I was going to comment that like all these celebrities that had to do their shows from home, it was the most accessible I've ever felt uh, that these celebs had, you know, had ever been because you're seeing them at home with their kids and it, it completely demystified, you know, that these glamorous lives you think that they had really weren't nearly as glamorous as they actually were. Um, so it was kind of, it was, I think I could really see how people could say that. So what's our next slide here? We got to keep it rolling. I think we already touched on this, so we can just keep going here. Um, so this would kind of, this sort of segues sort of toward uh, to the end of our program. Our last segment is sort of overlaps with this. And, you know, so you, you know, one of the big questions is, you know, is, is, is going to large increase in remote work going to, you know, be a profound change in an organization's effectiveness, efficiency, or culture? I mean, anybody can pontificate on that, I guess. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, what happens once the pandemic goes away, how much we snap back to things as they were. And certainly one thing that isn't gonna change immediately is most people have long-term leases that they're in. Um, and so they're going to have office space that's gonna be sitting there and they're probably gonna to wanna to, you know, use it as much as they can um, and not abandon it altogether. So for no other reason, people are gonna still have offices to go back to for you know, probably four or five years on average until people uh, maybe can shrink their leases. Um, and so people will have a place to go. And for myself, I mean, you mentioned that you know, people are buying different configurations of homes and and I found that I could really use a room that actually is more, you know, like a soundproof room so that, you know, all of the, mainly the dogs and barking and all these things um, can't find their way in to the, uh, to your Zoom calls, although they seem to anyways. But anyways, anybody else, um, you know, have any comments about these, these questions here, hidden advantages in virtual, um, you know, can the benefits outweigh disadvantages? Any, I mean, we've already talked a little bit about this, but any other additional thoughts? Yeah, Steve, I'll, I'll start, I guess. Um, you know, I think you've got to manage your day and think about things a little bit differently, but if you can, then you can have great advantages. Uh, I find, um, you know, having some sort of break where I get to move around more is uh, really productive to my ability to think and maybe do some strategic thinking if I'm out walking or on a bike ride, things like that. Um, now, calendars don't always accommodate that, but if you can uh, build in um, just a better life balance, because you're remote a few days a week or every day of the week, um, and you can have discipline to stick to it, I think that's a huge advantage. Um, you can use your commute time to exercise, you can listen to podcasts, you could maybe even if your firm is you know, clever enough to give you consumable content and audio, you could walk around doing it. Um, I've long tried to squeeze every second out of the day doing those kinds of things, and I think um, it's just 
you know, making it a little bit more socially acceptable uh, than in the office all the time is a good thing. So I see some upside. I, I wouldn't sell, you know, I wouldn't sell my house. I've had a number of our team asking if they can permanently move to Hawaii or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'd just be cautious. I, I think there's a real challenge being in a management or steering role um, if you aren't able to get together on some frequent basis and somewhat spontaneously. You know, I know a lot of people travel and accommodate that kind of thing, but I, I, uh, I'd love to keep working from my home office more, but I think um, I'll be in, you know, my building a substantial amount of the time and there'll be some really incredibly valuable things to come out of that. Um, you know, I think the homework is a lot more of the individual contributor type stuff and the collaboration. So, so those are a few thoughts, I think, uh, and the Americans in particular are very forgetful. So, so uh, we'll see, but, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't move to, you know, a remote corner of the earth too quickly. <laughs> Pierce, you got any thoughts or Bob or Z? Oh, no, just to add to Jeff's comment about, uh, a personal comment on, on, on finding time to relax or do something. <laughs> we actually got one of those little trampolines that you can put in your, in your house somewhere. And we're finding that the most uh, restful or relaxing or rejuvenating thing we can do better than the bike, better than the rower, whatever. All right. So if people are looking for a break, I'd recommend that. Anyway. Yeah, literally, literally a break there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've gotten a little closer to my teammates. Uh, before, when you're in the office, you're running from one meeting to another or from one project to another, and you're just like focused. And right now, I've been more concerned of how are my teammates doing? How are they feeling? And I've, I've been able to get closer to them uh, on a more personal uh, way, hey, how's your family? How how are you feeling? And I even had one of my colleagues say that I felt a little bit more relaxed, and she was able to open up with me a little bit more because I'm always just in the run in the office. Um, so I've taken this as a as a positive, and just so we keep in mind, one of the quotes that I saw online was. Um, we are not a team because we're, we work together. We are a team because we respect, trust, and care for each other. And let's not forget that humane part. All of this has been crazy with work and all that, but I think as society, we have grown to be a little bit more concerned of how our neighbor is doing. And it was kind of like a little wake up call um, all of this craziness that has happened to us to not just be concerned about and consumed about ourselves, but also be concerned about other people. Thank you, Z. Bob, you got any final thoughts? No, you know, I, I think um, I've, I kind of lean like Jeff does. You know, I, I know that once this is over, I'm going to find myself in the office. Uh, it, it was particularly difficult for me to actually come home and work because I do spend time visiting with people. And that's how I've always kept my finger on the pulse of what people need and, and, and so forth. And so, you know, instead of doing that now, I, I just actually, I do check-ins and, and things like that. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing things that, you know, I have that are, that so I can still, you know, communicate with people like I was before. And it took a little bit to, of getting used to, but I'm looking forward to the office being op open again. I do like the change of scenery and, but there, you know, there's a, there are a lot of hidden benefits and, and there's going to be, a, there's a lot of hidden savings. You know, every company is going to have to evaluate that for themselves and figure out, you know, what is the cost benefit of having people out of the office and uh, really start to take a hard look at it. Yeah, and I, I would just, uh, I guess, we'll close it out here with, you know, for a law firm in particular, your most difficult cost to manage is your office space because you can only set that guess at it. And then if things change, you can be stuck with a lot of empty space. And in a way, we've been paying away on, you know, uh, leasehold space for the next last five months or whatever. It feels like five years, but it's only been like five months. 
and you know there's nobody there but you know so that's not going to change but if you can if we can use less footprint we'll become more efficient that means that uh, the you know our corporate clients can get you know even better you know um you know effectiveness out of our rates lower rates so i think it actually could feed money into the economy if if it turns out we can find a nice new balance where there's lower cost for office space and uh, more flexibility for at least professional service firms and i think probably accounting firms are ahead of us on that my last comment is really i really do miss the esprit de corps of being in a group you know like a physical group of people even doesn't have to be that big i miss the camaraderie a lot so i'm gonna have to figure out how to replace that a little bit more than i have um, but, you know, to me, that's, that's just sort of a, one of the great benefits of, you know, being in a good organization is just that good buzz that it has and hanging out with people that are your coworkers, but, you know, also um, our co-travelers in life. And so that, that part's a little bit, needs a little help from, from my perspective for me, but other people seem to be doing pretty good. With, with that, I guess we can wrap it up. We're at... There's a question, Oh, there's Steve. a question. Oh, sorry. Yep. I didn't see that one. Oh, that one just came in. Sure. So what's... This is... Uh, is anyone getting together with their team outside the office to socialize? Um, restaurant, bars, and parks are open. So I, I would say that very limited for me. I have had a, a, a few people that have done some socially distancing stopping by, but how about other other folks? Mm. Not here. No, just Zoom, just Zoom. Yeah. On, a, on a small basis, um, Steve, not, not certainly not as a group, but a kind of one-on-one -on -one or two, group, two, two or three socially distanced masks, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were thinking about going out to Sturgis, you know, with the firm. <laughs> <laughs> but we decided not to. But yeah, anyways, yeah, so I guess that's the answer. So, hey, I want to thank panelists and particularly Jeff for taking time out to do this out of his busy schedule. Um, really appreciate it. And, and uh, hopefully uh, we, tomorrow's our last webinar of the, of the series. So thanks everybody for tuning in today and we look forward to maybe seeing you again tomorrow. Thanks very much for everybody's participation. Adios.